Well, this is a, this is exciting news. I mean, where does this in in the in the long list of awards, acknowledgments, and accomplishments that you have um, accrued over the course of your life, this has got to be up there pretty high. Oh, is it ever? Uh, especially for a an aging, overweight curler, it's kind of need to be <laughs> need to be in the in the same breath as the Bobby Orr's and the, just talking to Paul Henderson and you. Get, you get a text from Bobby Orr and you get a uh, handshake from uh, Paul Henderson and people like that, you go, wow, you know, it's pretty cool. And uh, it's really neat for my sport, of course, of curling. And uh, it's just great to be, uh, to be even mentioned in the same breath as some of these legends. So which came first for you, golf or curling? Golf. Golf. I was, I was a member of our golf course at age six. And uh, I got pretty decent at it till about 16, 17. And I was playing a lot of curling at the same time. And uh, as I said earlier to somebody, I was uh, I was doing so much curling and golfing, and uh, the school kind of got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> my mother my mother made me uh, pick one I had to drop, and I decided I'd miss school and just do the golf and curling. But it uh, yeah, curling kind of didn't come along. We didn't have Little Rocks back then. That's how old I am, Bob. Yeah. And uh, so me I didn't too. really get into curling till I was about twelve, eleven or twelve. So, uh, but I loved it just as much. Well, I was going to say, I mean, there was junior curling, um, but for many of us, we started, uh, actually, um, if you didn't join a club, uh, many people started in high school. Yeah, that's exactly right, and I, you're, you're exactly right. I started the year before high school. My dad taught me yeah. uh, all the technique and stuff, the grade eights, and then when I got into high school, I got on the uh, team and, uh, and you know, kind of fueled the interest a little bit more, but uh, I, I loved it from day one. Uh, and it was the perfect fit with golf and curling, too, because from a seasonal perspective, you, you flow almost seamlessly from one into the other. Yeah, and, and you know, you're a great golfer. It's, it's, it's a lot of the similarities, and it's an amazing amount of, uh, of the top curlers in the country are really good players, really good golfers. And yeah. I, I can only think it's more like the, you know, it's the same type of strategy. You've got to be patient. You've got to, uh, you've got to know how to miss. You know, it's the same. Both sports are, uh, you, you've got to be smart at what you're doing, and uh, it, it, it's very similar, I think. Uh, with Russ Howard, one of the things, and I don't know how proud you are of this necessarily, but um, there are innovations that that come along periodically in the game, significant innovations. And um, the free guard zone is one that has dramatically changed the sport. And you effectively came up with it while you were, what, were you goofing around with your brother? Yeah, I'm really excited about that myself. It, you know, as years go by, I realize how much of a change it really did make. It's it, it's 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 akin to uh, you know four four balls and four strikes. It changed. It was a quite a dramatic change, and it created a lot more offense. And uh, yeah, I actually uh, my brother and I played against each other in practice just to just to uh, create a little more competition. And sure. If one of us got way ahead and with the old rule, it was just like watching paint dry. It was yeah. like hit everything in sight, and and that's what happened on for the television games too back in the late '80s. Yeah. So I was asked to, uh, we went to the Moncton 100, which is a massive a curling event in 1990, and I was asked if I had any ideas, and I just simply blurted out, well, this is what I do in practice to keep my brother and I sharp. We, we don't hit the first four stones, and it creates a lot more offense. It gives us tougher shots. We get better with our finesse shots, and, and uh, the whole world adopted it. And uh, now that I'm in uh, TV, I'm glad they did because it, it, it's really helping our ratings. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. <laughs> it, well, it, it, it's a more interesting game, clearly. Oh, for sure. And it has created a lot of strategies um, that I'm guessing you didn't necessarily think about when you first created it. You were just trying to get rocks in play, right? That's right. That's right. But it's funny you'd say that because we, we, my brother and I, practiced with it for four or five years, and then all of a sudden the world adopted it, and we were four or five years ahead of the curve. So it was kind of nice if you're if you're going to go to a world championship and represent your country, it's kind of nice to bring your own rule with you. Well, so so let me ask you then, Russ. Did did you guys work on on you know the little chip shot um, uh, if if with a rock in front of the house? No, that's a good that's a good point. We didn't we didn't think that far out. We uh, we just always went around that one, and uh, yeah. if it was close to the rings, we might move it. But uh, what you see out of that Rachel Holman team uh, now, Lisa Weagle is the lead on that team, and they've kind of perfected that shot, and it's it's a spectacular new innovation to the game. It's one more one more wrinkle that uh, a lot of the teams are experimenting with. What um, and I've never asked you this, and um, what motivated the move uh, from Ontario? Because I mean, you know, you lived up in Penetang for a long time, or in Midland, I guess, um, in that area, and um, uh, you had a you had a, um, a pretty good job as a golf pro you had a great career as a curler in the province of Ontario and all of a sudden you know I don't know this is a number of years ago but uh, right. off you went to the east coast what what uh, motivated yeah. that 
Well, it was just job related. Was uh, it? My my job description changed quite a bit, and financially, it just didn't make any sense. And I um, I was offered a wonderful job at the Royal Oaks Golf Club in Moncton, New Brunswick, and it was a very high end course uh, designed by Reese Jones. Right. And uh, we just kind of went, and which was you know unfortunate in a lot of ways because uh, you know I was leaving my brother and. I had Pete Corner and uh, Neil Harrison at the time, and we had, we were number one in the world for a while, and so it was that was a difficult decision. But um, last time I checked, the uh, curling the curling winnings weren't putting enough bread on the table. So right. We you know it was one of those. It was more uh, I had to follow my career, and uh, we we thought it would be a great spot to raise the children, and and um, it worked out quite well. We eventually got into the real estate business, and now I have a little more time to do the the commentating. Uh, about thirty seconds here. Um... Gold medal or a briar? Uh, gold medal, yeah. gold medal for sure. The briar I've got so much, uh, so many memories for, and you're you're playing the best teams in the world, even though they're all you know they're all out of Canada. That's yeah. the toughest cream in the crop. But gold medal is just so different. The uh, the media attention, the media pressure. The we were ranked ninth out of ten teams to win the Canadian trials. When we won them with Gushu, we we're now ranked number one to win a gold medal. And all of a sudden the you know, the, the, the pressure amps up quite a bit. So yeah. it was, it, I think it was more relief than anything to win the gold medal. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get him to hurry hard up to the stage. Russ Howard for the presentation of his Canada Sports Hall of Fame honored member jacket. Uh, that was amazing, just fantastic. Um, I'm not speechless because you just said I yelled a lot, so I better better come up with something here. Uh, I'd, I'd certainly like to thank uh, David for introducing me. Um, thank the uh, Canada Sports Hall of Fame for having me here. Uh, they do such a wonderful job with Canadian sport, amateur sport. Um, their never-ending efforts go a long, long way to uh, promote and inspire our youth, which is so important these days. Um, before I get going, I, I just want you to know, you probably saw it in the, in the clip, but uh, I've always been a skip, so I really don't know why I'm going first. <laughs> I'm not used to this. There's been six shots made before I get there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it, it's not all bad. I can, I can now brag and say that I was inducted into the Hall of Fame before Joe Sackick. <laughs> I am I'm both honored and humbled uh, to be standing here tonight uh, with so many great legends of the sport. The, the legends in behind all the, the people we saw earlier, it's just, just mind-boggling that a, an old, out-of-shape curler from a small town could be a part of the same group. I, I had a text message from Bobby Orr. Uh, I talked to Paul Henderson. We've golfed a couple times. It's just, it's just so unreal. It's just pinch me. It's pretty cool. Um, to the, all the uh, talented inductees, uh, congratulations. What a, what a great group. Unfortunately, they're all taller than I am, but it's okay. It's just a great group. It's, it's such an honor to be here. Uh, special thanks to Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment Group um, for sponsoring tonight's event and uh, being my sponsor. That's it's pretty cool. And uh, more importantly, for bringing us this year's Leafs. <laughs> Just think about it, if the season ended tonight. <laughs> Mind you, Sackick's still undefeated, right? So. <laughs> but we're close. We've got a great team. Uh, this achievement would definitely not be possible with my mom, without my mom and my dad. Uh, my mother's here tonight, and I'd like my mom to stand up. My mother will be 90 in January. Uh, 
I know that wasn't in the speech, but uh, growing up, uh, and my mother can attest to this, I, I really, really wanted to be an honor student. <laughs> but my mom insisted I go into sports. Um, let's face it, the uh, high school was the best 10 years of my life. So <laughs> I remember my mom in grade 10, it was my, my third year in grade 10. She said, look, you're, all you do, you, you curl a lot, you play a lot of hockey. I was on a rep team at the time and school. She said, look, it's just not working. Your grades are falling like crazy. This doesn't work. You, you're going to have to drop something. And I said, I'm going to miss school. <laughs> but I, I got outvoted two to one. So I, I stayed with it. But uh, it worked out well that this event's now in Toronto this year as opposed to Calgary. Nothing against Calgary, but uh, it made it that much easier for my mom to make the 150-kilometer walk from Midland. <laughs> She's pretty frugal and you've got, with the way the gas prices are. <laughs> they, they don't make them like they used to. Love you, Mom. <laughs> My dad was my mentor, as Glenn mentioned in the, uh, in the clip, uh, always uh, emphasizing technique, which is exactly what you had said. But my mother was the competitive one. I didn't realize it until later in life, but uh, I was in the grade eight relay team, my first year in grade eight. And I made that relay team. We're running a half mile oval at the high school. I was running the third leg of the, of the four of us because I was the slowest of the four of us. Uh, I got the baton, we were in last place, five teams, we were in last place. I get the baton, and I start to run as fast as I can run. And You know how you, some, you feel like there's somebody in your peripheral, and I look over, and there's my mom. Stride for stride. <laughs> she wasn't 90 then, but... <laughs> she had walked through about an acre and a half of uh, bush, climbed an eight-foot fence, <laughs> ran to the inside of the uh, field, and just started screaming. <laughs> the adrenaline took over. I passed the other four athletes. I got to the, my guy, Randy Simpel, handed him the baton. Randy was the fastest, the absolute fastest in the entire city. Nobody's once, if we got there in first, he was gonna win the thing. He brought it home for us. We actually set a track record for public schools that day. But what nobody knows is when R Randy crossed the line for our team to win, Parkview School to win, my mother was still ahead of him. <laughs> my mom's famous saying, and still is today, things happen for a reason. Well, she was right. Uh, when I was six years old, she produced my younger brother. Now, at the time, I didn't think it was a very good idea. But it turned out it was a real good idea. My brother, Glenn, and he's over there beside my mom. If he could stand up. <clears throat> Glenn's here with his family. He, Glenn is the winningest curler in Canadian curling history. Uh, I had the pleasure of curling. I had the pleasure of curling with Glenn forever. Uh, I made the move to Moncton, and I, I certainly regret it for my curling career to leave somebody like Glenn. Uh, it was, it's just unbelievable. What a pleasure. He throws it as clean as any curler's ever thrown a rock in his life. Um, I'd like to thank Glenn for all those years of hanging in there with me. And despite his advanced age, he's, uh, he's still going. He just won a bond spiel this weekend, and uh, I have to be impartial because I work for TSN, but. This isn't a TSN event, so <laughs> I think Glenn's team of Ontario will uh, be the team that will win the next gold medal for Canada. <laughs> Another thing that definitely happened for a reason, at age 16, one faithful day, I lost the final of an event to, a curling event to a girl. I eventually married that girl, my beautiful wife, Wendy. Stand up, honey.
To help with our speech, the Hall of Fame suggested a few tips. They said you should thank your family, you should thank your coach, you should thank your teammates, and you should thank your friends. Wendy, 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 and Wendy. Um, <laughs> They forgot speechwriter. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I love you. We've been married for 32 wonderful years. We were blessed with two young, wonderful children. Stephen, he couldn't be here tonight. Uh, Stephen's 28 years old. He couldn't be here tonight. He's in the capital of Newfoundland, Fort McMurray. <clears throat> Making more money than I do. My lovely wife, or my lovely wife, my lovely daughter, Ashley, is here today, all the way from Manitoba. She came in to support us, which is fantastic. And Ashley graduates next week with an honors degree in business from Fredericton. That means she doesn't have a job if anybody's looking. Thanks, Ash. But for me, one of the proudest moments in my curling career was standing on the Olympic podium with my teammates watching the Canadian flag go up higher than the American one, higher than the Finnish flag, um, singing the national anthem with my family in the front row, knowing that we were bringing home that gold medal. And in closing, I have had many wonderful, wonderful years with this sport. I've competed, I've coached, and I'm now broadcasting the sport that I truly love. And this is such an honor for me, and I really want to share this with my family, my teammates, and my sport of curling. Thank you.